By now, we all know, or should know, if you don't know, do you live under a rock? Anyways, we all know the situation that has unfolded with Mr. Deion Sanders and Travis Hunter. Even when it happened, I knew it was a big deal, but I didn't think it'd be quite as controversial as it is now. You've got a lot of people out there saying and criticizing Travis's decision, which I don't understand because he's a kid and you get to pick and go to whichever college you want to last time I checked. I guess I've missed out on the memo that if you're a four or five star recruit, you gotta go to a D1 powerhouse. And trust me guys, I get it. He's the number one player and it's a big deal he's going to Jackson State. I understand that. What doesn't sit right with me, and I can't quite comprehend and wrap my mind around it, is why people are criticizing him. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're taking personal shots at him and knocking his character for no good reason, trying to say, oh, he's only going there because they're paying him millions of dollars. I'm gonna end that there. We'll touch on that in just a second. Before I get fired up, I wanna touch on the main point and the main topic of this video. Deion Sanders just exposed the truth and we're gonna talk all about it. I gotta give him credit and he's got my respect. He seems like a great guy. I know I don't know Dion personally and many of us don't either, but you can almost tell when somebody's a good person. A lot of times you'll see scenarios of great NFL players that are kind of not so great people. I feel like Dion's a great player and a great person. An awesome combination. What he just said is really, and I mean really interesting, we're going to talk all about that. And also, Nick Saban said something about Deion Sanders I found even more intriguing. We're going to dive on to it. So if you're new to the channel and love football content, consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like for more. Without further ado, let's get into it. Oh yeah, guys, real quick. Before we get into it, I posted a video a couple of days ago and said, let's see how many new subscribers we can gain. And I'll tell you how many we gained from that video. And we gained over 850. We gained over 800 subscribers just from me guys asking you to subscribe and see how many we can gain. I thought that was really cool. It's almost like a little game. And I figured, hey, why not? Let's try it again. How many ever subscribers we gain from this video, I'll tell you about it in tomorrow's video or the one after. I'm not even going to set a goal for subscribers. If you're enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the family. It really helps on the channel tremendously. And now without further ado, let's get back into it. All right, let's just jump straight into it. So we all know the rumors of how everyone's saying, oh, he only went to Jackson State because they're paying him more money. There's been many going on that Barstool Sports, who has a contract with Jackson State, is going to offer him $1.5 million. Whether that's true or not, it hasn't been confirmed, but what has been confirmed is what Deion Sanders has just said. Here's what he said one day ago in an interview. We ain't got no money. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard. That means we kicked your butt, we took what was ours, and now you gotta make up an excuse why. Wow, I gotta say it, I know I've already said it earlier in the video, it's really hard not to like this man. If you don't know him, you're about to know him in the next couple of years. I think he's going to be a great college football coach. I haven't even touched on this one talking about the Travis Hunter and Deion Sanders subject, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he took that team from being 4-8 and eight last year to now being 11-1. Why is nobody talking about that or giving him credit? Let me repeat myself. He took a team that went 4-8 and eight to 11-1. That's unremarkable. Why is nobody talking about it? Because it's an HBCU and he did it at an FCS school. So therefore, nobody cares. I'm not saying I don't care. I think it's impressive. I'm just saying as a whole, they're not going to put it out there on social media and give him credit. As interesting as that quote was, I don't even think it compares to the next one we're about to get into. And this right here is what I was touching on yesterday. He said, quote unquote, if a kid is good enough for a power five school, why isn't he good enough for us? I don't know where we started thinking HBCUs are beneath us as people. That right there is exactly what I'm talking about. Have you guys noticed, and it's more in the high school basketball aspect of things, whenever these players are considering HBCUs, they make it seem like they're lower than the other colleges. Just like Dion said, they refer to it as if they're beneath other people. I hope you guys understand and know where I'm trying to go with this. For example, I've seen this numerous times. I know you guys have too. You'll have people in interviews or on Instagram and Twitter say, yo, you know it's okay to go to a HBCU, right? What do you mean it's okay to go to a HBCU? They make it sound like it's a bad thing. They almost try to make it seem like you're doing charity work, and I think that's the best way to describe it. 
I honestly feel like that's what's scaring all these top recruits from going there. Everyone tries to make it seem like it's such a bad thing and it's going to hurt your draft stock and it's not a good college, when in reality, they're some of the best colleges out there. The truth is, and Dion exposed it completely, everyone has this narrative right now and it's not going to change unless other five-star recruits go to HBCUs where people think it's a downgrade to go there. Travis Hunter is trying to change the culture and like I said in last night's video, that's why I respect him so much. He could literally be the start to a domino effect that could change the game of football forever. Will it happen? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But guess what? It wouldn't even come close to happening if he didn't make this decision. We gotta eventually get to the point where nobody's shocked a top recruit goes to a HBCU. Because right now it's like, holy crap, we got a five-star recruit. It's rare. In five to ten years, it doesn't need to be that way. We need to expect these four and five-star recruits to go to these schools. I want to throw in there and keep in mind, Jackson State is an FCS program, so I don't really know if a lot of five-star recruits are going to go there, but there's other HBCUs that are in the Division One ranks. There's been a lot of head coaches who have been asked what they think about Travis Hunter's decision, and Nick Saban recently got asked about it. Here's what he had to say. He kept it real short and said, Really, I have a lot of respect for Deion Sanders. He got a great player. That's great for their program. I'm happy for him and that he got a great player. I'm not going to throw up the full interview and bore you, but another point I saw in that video I want to touch on is that Nick Saban said Deion Sanders is a good person and a good guy. Some of you may not think it's that big of a deal. In my opinion, that's huge. If Nick Saban says you're a good person, you're a good person. He's got no reason to lie. I trust his word, and also Nick Saban does commercials with Deion Sanders with Aflac, so I know he knows him a little. It's not like him and Dion have never talked. They obviously talk and have conversations if they're doing commercials together. And do you really think Nick Saban would do a commercial with somebody he didn't like? I don't think so. Nick Saban complimenting Dion saying he's a good person really speaks volumes about his character and it's a great look. On the other hand and on the flip side, let's just say Florida State fans, they're not too happy and they are burning Dion's jerseys. And actually, if you want to get more specific, there is Florida State fans having Deion Sanders jersey burning parties. Ridiculous. Somebody on one of the Knowles fan pages said, When is his jersey burning party? Bowden took him from the hood in Fort Myers and made him a man. Punk, you know what, and I can't say the rest. You know what I find extremely, and I mean extremely funny? I want you to hear me out. This is 100% facts. The person that said that tweeted it, whatever you want to call it, if they saw Deion Sanders tonight, they'd be asking for a picture and telling him how great he is. That's how the world works, and I've seen it happen in person before. People will bash somebody on the internet, see him in real life, and praise him and bow down to him. And I got another thing to say about that. I've never understood the burning jerseys, especially when it came to LeBron and some other players, because you spent your hard-earned money on a $200 jersey just to burn it. If you gotta ask me, if you burn any jersey, I don't care what kind it is, you're a complete idiot, and it speaks volumes about your character, not the player's character. To make things even worse, there is a picture in a video on Twitter where a Florida State fan not only burned the jersey, but it was a signed jersey in a case. He didn't even take it out. Here's where I question in your IQ level and just how smart you are. If you don't want his jersey no more, fine. But why would you burn it when you could sell it for good money? I'm sure you could sell a signed Deion Sanders Florida State jersey for over a thousand dollars. You're a straight up bozo and a straight up weirdo if you burn jerseys and I cannot emphasize that enough. I'm not gonna lie, Deion Sanders, he was before my time. But I would love to have a Deion Sanders signed jersey in my house. If you don't want it, send it over my way. I'd be glad to take it off of your hands. You know what I'm so thrilled about? I've learned so much about Deion Sanders in the past three to four days than I ever have, and I respect him more each and every day. I didn't know he was as great as a person as he was until all this started coming out, and I started listening to him talk and what other great coaches got to say about him. It all makes sense to me. Travis Hunter, he didn't go there for the money. He went there because Deion Sanders is a great defensive back and he can teach him how to play his position. The way I would describe Dion is he is a player's coach. He knows how to vibe with the players and they're almost like a friend to him. Nick Saban, he's a great coach and a great guy, but he's not really a player's coach and y'all know what I mean by that. He's not really a guy you can crack a joke with all the time and kind of relate to him a lot. Dion Sanders for these other players at Jackson State is very relatable. They're almost coming out of the same situations that he did growing up. 
I'm going to stop myself there. I could go on and on. I got so many great things to say about Travis Hunter, Deion Sanders, and what's going to happen. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. But without it being said, it's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are there. If you know the channel, what are you doing? Join the family. Hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. And as always, let's be grab my Peace.